to us today. All the time. time. All the time. All and every time. Amen. Even if you don't think it or believe it, yes. he is good. Amen. 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 He works everything to the good for them that trust the Lord. Yes. Who's good? Maybe somebody else's. But he always works to the good. Amen. 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 Working our situation, turning things around on our behalf. Amen. 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 We have a God that cares for us. Yes. We have a God that loves us. Yes. We have that God is merciful. Yes. Amen. 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 His love is unconditioning. Yes. The Bible yes. talks about the gifts are without repentance, meaning that he's blessed you and gifts you, and, and he's not going to take it back. Amen. Amen. He wants you to use that gift. Yes. Amen. The Bible says that you are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood. Yes. Amen. A holy nation, a particular people, kind of strange if you ask me, over there speaking in tongues and worshiping the Lord, not my cup of tea, some will say in the world, amen, so we can be a peculiar people, that we should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, amen, the goodness of God, his joy, his presence, his goodness in our lives. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I haven't started my opening scripture or in the prayer. I'm just trying to gear you up. Amen. 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 Just like when you want to have a potluck, you go to somebody's house, yes, I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And you go and you smell the food and you wonder what's for dinner. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so sometimes, amen, when we have our scriptures in the presence of God, amen, we know it's going to be good. Yes. Amen. I've been training up here. We're giving Brother Billy a break. He needs to enjoy the, the message, to enjoy the, he needs to be ministered to as well. Amen. Amen. And so we thank him also for what he does and sharing of the pulpit. And thank you, Pastor Gene, for giving me this opportunity to open up this Sunday service. Yes. Amen? Amen? God is good. Awesome. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them that God is good. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's okay to get a little excited. Yes. Amen. Even though we have our structure, structure is good. But sometimes God loves to operate within or without a structure. Amen. Yes. God can move within our structure. But God says sometimes you just need to move the structure yes. to the side and let me move. Let me touch my people. Let me heal them. Yes. I've heard their cry. The cry has come unto God, even unto his ear in his temple. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we look at ourselves and we see ourselves, amen, God don't look at us the way we look at ourselves. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God don't look at us the way we look at ourselves. We don't look at ourselves. We see our, our failures. We... Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Come on, Mr. Oh, yeah. This is low self-esteem. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Right. Amen. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm human. Amen. I don't think of myself as much as I should. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when I look at myself, I say, God, help me to see me right. in your eyes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Help me to see me in your eyes. How do you see me, God? I see myself as a failure, sinful, prideful, lustful, all this garbage, amen. But God, see me. How do you see me? That I am a chosen generation, that I am a royal priesthood, that I am a peculiar people, that I am God's property, and that I belong to Him. And that He's doing a work in my life, and He is not done. Look at somebody say, He's not done with you yet. Amen. Let us stand as we read today's scripture. Hallelujah. God is still working on you. This is uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. Reading out of the NIV versions. And this is a story about Martha and Mary, the two sisters. Amen. Amen. And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. Say, on their way. On their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha had opened her home to him. Now, I don't know about you, 
But when my wife opens up the home to have an event, to have a potluck, to have a barbecue, to invite the family over, she does a whole lot of cleaning in that house. <laughs> Amen. I said, why are you going to clean if they're going to make it dirty and you're going to clean afterwards again? She wants that house to be presentable. Here, Martha has opened up her home to Jesus, and it's kind of like symbolically opening up your heart unto the Lord. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my knock and open the door, that I will sup with him and he will sup with me. Amen. So opening up, so Martha here opened up her home to Jesus and his disciples. And she had called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. The younger sister Mary was at the feet of Jesus, listening to him and what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation. She was trying to get the house ready. She was trying to probably get the supper ready, the leavened bread. She was trying to get everything together. And, and she looked at her sister and her sister over there with, with Mary, with, with Jesus. And she's all. <sighs> <sighs> so she goes to Jesus. Jesus. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm trying to get this. And she's over there. Can you tell her? Tell her to come and help me. How many of you like to tell mom and dad, can you look at me? <laughs> can you tell her to help me? And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Say, few things are needed. Few things are needed. Amen. 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 Only a few things are needed, and indeed only one. And Mary has chosen what is better, and what is not to be taken, and this will not be taken away from her. So we can be worried and upset about many things today. There's things probably in your mind that may distract you, that the enemy may want to use to take you away from today's message, from today's worship. Amen? Amen. But you know what? You're here today, yes. and you choose the better thing for you. We also like to know, and we like to think to know what's better for other people. Amen? You should do this. You should do that. You know, if you mix this with this and drink this, you'll feel better. Yes. Amen. Amen. But do you know the better thing for yourself? Well, come on. Amen. We're good taking care of others, but when it comes to us, it's the better thing. Yes. You are to choose the better thing for yourself, and you did that today. Amen. You did that today. So don't worry, and don't be upset about the many things that may distract you in this world. Your finances, your bills, your, your nosy neighbor, whatever it may be, God will take care of that. Yes. yes. You're here at the feet of Jesus. Amen. You're Amen. here to hear the word. Yes. Amen. You're here to worship. Yes. And we're here to love the Lord together. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap offering. As we open up the service in today's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday service. Amen. We thank you for everybody that worked behind the scenes to make it happen, dear yes, Lord. Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity that we have once more to gather in your name yes. to worship and praise you. Yes. We thank you that you bless us our time together today, that we may feel your presence, that we may be engulfed with your glory. That each person in this place would be open to hear your word and will respond in obedience. We pray, we pray especially for our worshipers today, Lord, that you would use them, Lord, and that you would use a mighty way to lead us in song and worship as we glorify your name. We ask for your anointing to fall upon our speaker today, dear Lord, Pastor Jean, that she will minister the word and powerfully, dear Lord, that it would go out to do what it's set to do, dear Lord. And may all who hear today be blessed and challenged by what is shared in today's word. We pray 
this in Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. 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 So we have our declaration yes. that you would join with me as we remain standing. I am learning it. Yes. So if I stumble, pay no attention to me, I will catch up. Yes. Amen. So let us go. We have come here today to worship the Lord and to hear what he has to say. He has led us
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said to him, This day, somebody say, This day, this day, this day. This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for thank your word today. Lord we thank you, Lord God, that you're still seeking and you're still saving. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, that you're still keeping those who have already come. Yes. And I bless you today for this word today, Father God. I just ask, Lord, that you would help me to bring this word forth to your people, oh God, in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, may you be glorified in all that we yes, say and all that we do. For it is in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Christ, we give you praise. Yes. Amen and thank Amen. God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For each of you that have come today, we welcome our guests who are here with us today. Amen. Happy to see you. And we're glad to see those who were who came back. Yes. Amen. I'm glad to see Sister Stephanie today. Yes. Amen. She came Amen. Back. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So, how many of you today um, have dreams and desires for something that you would like to see, or yes. something you haven't seen before? Yes. I think we all can say it. Yep. Yep. Raise both hands. You yep. check out your foot. <laughs> Yes. We all have dreams. Yes. Some people want to go to the Grand Canyon. They haven't seen the Grand Canyon yet. So some people desire to go see the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Others want to go to Israel so they can walk in the land where Jesus walked here. And I can tell you, if you ever get a chance to go there, yes. don't hesitate. Yes. Run. Yes. You'll be happy that you did. Yes. Or maybe you have a desire, you know, for a child that's been away in the far country, I call it. You know, when they have left home and they just seemingly checked out of life because they're out there doing everything except trying to live for God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you desire to see those children. You desire to see that child. This desire of this longing is fueled by the anticipated joy that you look forward to when it's fulfilled. That desire of seeing that child. That desire maybe of seeing the Grand Canyon, of going and walking in the steps where Jesus walked. These are anticipated joys. And so in our text today that we just read, we read about a man who had a desire <coughs> and what he did to satisfy or to fulfill that desire. And so our message today is entitled, A Desire to See Jesus. A desire to see Jesus. Yeah. Of all the places and of all the people and all of the things that you could desire to see, seeing Jesus would top the list. Amen. Amen. Not everyone in this day, right where we are now, and I'm not talking about the end of the earth when he calls us all and we are all sin. But right now, not everyone will see him because they're not looking for him. That's right. Mm -hmm. But you who have come here today are a testimony that you desire to see Jesus. Yeah. You desire to have fellowship with him. And so here in this 18th chapter of Luke, uh, in the 19th chapter, he's talking about a man that desired to see Jesus. But then he talks, before we get to the 19th chapter, in chapter 18 of Luke, he talks about a group of people who was satisfied, at least one of them, was satisfied in himself. He thought, you know, that I got it all together, you know, I'm doing the right thing, and so I don't need anything else. Just look at me and look how good I am. Mm -hmm. And this is what this man was doing. That man, was called, he was righteous in his own eyes, and he was a Pharisee. In the, in, the, in the scripture you'll find in the New Testament, they talked about the Pharisees and they talked about the Sadducees. And the Pharisees are those who believed uh, in, in the righteousness of God. They believed that in the resurrection of the Lord. They believed in the, the salvation of the soul. And they believed in angels and believed in spirits. Sadducees didn't believe in that. That's why they call them sad, you see. <laughs> and so 
when we look at these, the, these two people are going up to the temple in chapter 18 to pray. The Pharisee, as he went up, he thanked God that he was not like other men. He thanked God that he was not an extortioner, that he was not unjust, that he was not an adulterer, or even like this publican over here. And so then he went on to kind of lift himself up. He says, I fast twice a week, and I give tithes of all that I have. In other words, he's just patting himself on the back before the Lord. But how many of you know today that God sees us and he knows us, and we don't have to, you know, introduce ourselves to him? He knows more than we know about us. And so we don't need to go and introduce ourselves to him. He came to introduce himself to us. Amen. But this publican, on the other hand, he would not even so much as lift up his eyes to heaven. But he smote upon his breast and said, Lord, have mercy upon me, mm. a sinner. How many of us know that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity? Yes. Yes. We all were sinners. And if you don't know Jesus today and the pardon of your sin, you're still a sinner. Yes. 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 Amen. Now, being a sinner and doing sin is two different things. Being a sinner means you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You never invited him to come into your heart. But even after we receive Jesus Christ, sometimes we miss the mark. That's right. Sometimes we do those things that we know are wrong, yeah. but we did them anyway. <laughs> and that's doing sin. That's not being a sinner. Because once you re receive Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you're no longer a sinner, even though you may, may on occasion sin. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, Pharisee was boasting about who he is and what he had and what he did. But the man that was justified on that day was the man who smote up on his breast and said, Lord, have mercy upon me, mm -hmm. a sinner. And he went down from, from that place justified, not the other man mm -hmm. who had fasted twice a week and who had given tithes of all that he had and talked about how great he was and what he was doing. That man didn't go down justified. Mm -hmm. It was the one who recognized that I'm a sinner. Yes. And without yes. you, Lord, I can't make it. That I need you in my life. Mm -hmm. I want you in my life. Right. You see, a lot of folk need God in their life, but yeah. they don't want him in their life. Yeah. Yeah. But God is speaking to those of us today who know that we need him in our lives. We cannot make it without him. Yeah. And he is so willing to come. He, he's just waiting for an opportunity for you to invite him in and let him be the Lord of your life. Amen. The man I say in today's text uh, Zacchaeus, he was chief of the publicans. He wasn't just one of the workers. He was over all the others. And it says that he was rich. And now sometimes that causes you a lot of problems. Yeah. <coughs> I can put it down this way. Sometimes when you see the pastor drive a Mercedes, you say that they must be taking the money from the church. <laughs> I know you heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look at what they're driving. I mean, they're getting all the money from the church. But I want you to know that just because you're rich doesn't mean that you're doing something crooked or something underhanded. Amen. And so this is what's the case here with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, his name means pure, mm -hmm. clean, and just. Mm -hmm. That's what his name means. Then I want, to see, want you to see his actions, to see if his actions right. correspond with his name. Yeah. So Zacchaeus, he didn't even consider himself to be great, but he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to look upon his face. But as I say, he was a short man. And there was crowds all around Jesus wherever he went. There was always a crowd around him. And so if you're short, and especially if you're in the back, you don't get to see Jesus. <laughs> and so Zacchaeus so wanted to see Jesus that he ran ahead of the crowd. Are you willing to run ahead of the crowd Amen. today? Amen. Amen. The crowd that's trying to pull you back into the Amen. lifestyle that you, you're trying to get rid of. Come the on now. Come on to, now. You know, get you to taste a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. You know, one time won't hurt you. Right. The crowd that says, well, you know, the game is on today. So, I mean, you know, you can go to Jesus any day. But, you know, that this is the only day that this game is playing. So, you know, you need to come on over here and enjoy. Because I got some.
some ribs cooked up and I, you know, I got some, we got all of the fixings and so we're going to have a good time. The cooler is full of the drinks that you like, so just come on in. You know, they're always trying to get you to come there. But you need to make sure that you're running to Jesus, that you're trying to get to see Jesus. Because tomorrow is not promised. You can enjoy the game today, but you may not see t tomorrow. Yes. Yes. And so what you need to do is do as God has called us to do. He says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But the more, as we see the day drawing closer, we're to draw even the closer to the things of God. In other words, church, it's time to stop playing Christian and really be Christian. And Christian doesn't mean you're Christian on a Sunday. It means you're Christian Monday through Sunday through Monday through Sunday. In other words, every day of your life, if you've been born of the Spirit of Christ, you are Christian. And you can live like a Christian each and every day of your life. That doesn't mean you can't go to a ball game. It doesn't mean that you can't have some barbecue. But it means you put God first. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You put God first in yes. everything. Mm -hmm. So Zacchaeus, this problem that he had being short, as they say, he ran ahead mm -hmm. of all of the other people because he wanted to see Jesus. Amen. And he climbed up into a sycamore tree. Now, I don't know what you need to do to get to see Jesus. Sometimes you just need to, you know, get up out of bed and not lay around being lazy that day. Amen. Sometimes you just need to tell your family, well, if you don't want to go with me, I'll see you when I get back. You know, but you need to go and see Jesus. Amen. Nothing Amen. should come between you and seeing the Lord. Amen. And sometimes you do have to leave your family right. behind. But you shouldn't leave them behind in the sense that I don't care whether you come with me or not. You need to be praying. You need to be fasting. You need to be seeking the Lord and asking other people to pray. Because Jesus is coming back soon. And he's coming back for a prepared people. Not those who have just lived their life any kind of way they wanted to live because I'm grown enough. Mama can't tell me nothing anymore. I do what I want to do. How old are you? I'm old enough to sleep in the bed without falling out. You know, people hear those sayings. We may be talking big and talking bad when we say stuff like that. But God sees those things, and he knows that if it were not for him, you yes, wouldn't right. have opened your eyes this morning. Amen. If it were not for him, you would not have been able to get out the bed this morning. Amen. You wouldn't have even had a mind to come to the house of prayer That's this right. morning. Yeah. So you need Jesus. Yes. We each need Jesus mm -hmm. day by day in our lives. Amen. And so Zacchaeus, he, he ride, ride, um, runs in, ahead, and he climbs up to, into this sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus because he knew Jesus was going to pass him. Do you know Jesus is passing this way today? He, he, he is here. Amen. He is with us today. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. And he will bless us today. You just need to open up your heart and receive what he has for you today. But just because you're, you're doing the right thing doesn't mean that you'll automatically receive right. uh, what you're desiring. Right. Sometimes you can do the right thing and you don't get what you're desiring. That wasn't Zacchaeus' case today. He got to see Jesus. And not only did he get to see Jesus, Jesus invited him down out of the tree because he said, I'm going to go to your house today. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, along the way, there are always going to be some adversaries. Mm -hmm. There are always going to be some enemies that are trying to keep you from where you're trying to get to. Right. Keep you from what you're trying to do, especially when you're trying to do something for the Lord. That's yeah. right. The enemy is there, and he's always trying, and he'll use anybody that will allow him to use them. He'll use your family. Yeah. Well, honey, I, you know, I want you to stay home today. I'm not feeling well. Well, come on to church with me and get your hands on me. Don't stay at home. Right. Come. Amen. Yes. Come and let the Lord minister to you. Yes. Because we are a corporate body. Mm -hmm. yes. That means that your faith links with my faith, and my faith links with your faith. And all of our faith is coming together. And there's power in corporate prayer. Amen. Amen. And we make hands on people and we pray for people. Mm -hmm. And so we need to stop staying at home, whatever the reason is, and come yes. to church that day. Yes. Because God has a word for you. 
God has a touch for you. Mm -hmm. And so, don't think that you're not going to get by without the adversary trying to hinder you. That's what I'm trying to convey today. That when, because the adversary is trying to hinder you, you're going to have to put forth more effort. Yeah. That's right. If you, you, you won't just be able to just, well, I just slide on into church today. <laughs> you know, well, if you get there, he's going to try to hinder you from receiving what the Lord has yes. for you there. He's going to put on your mind all of the things that you want to do after you leave church. <laughs> or all the stuff that you didn't get done right. before you came to church. Mm -hmm. Or the things that you're hoping to do next week. Well, maybe it's the roast that you left in the stove. He puts <laughs> all of these things because he's trying to it's keep you from me. hearing what thus saith the Lord. Yes. Amen. The Lord speaks to his people. Yes, he does. Amen. But we have to have an ear to hear. Amen. We have Amen. to have an ear to hear and to receive, a heart to receive what Amen. he's saying to us. Because otherwise it's just kind of like water rolling off a duck's back. <laughs> it doesn't penetrate. It just rolls on off. I think they were talking about soil and seeds in the Sunday school this morning. You know, so it got to be planted in some fertile ground. So this adversary doesn't go around wearing a sign saying, I'm going to hinder you today. <laughs> you think you're going, but I'm going to stop you today. You, no, you won't see any signs. It'll be a nice smile for honey. Let's just lay in today. Let us just stay in and enjoy each other today. You know, we work all week long, and we don't have any time together. So let's just have some time right together today. You see, he's subtle. Yeah. He's crafty. Mm -hmm. He's shrewd. He comes to distract you, to keep you from where God would have you to go. And as I said, he'll use your family, he'll use your friends, he'll use your own desires. Well, I desire to see this game today. <laughs> and so I'll see you next week, maybe. <laughs> and I say maybe because it depends on what comes up during the week, whether well, I'll see you next week. Right. I know you are, I must be talking to you today because you're so good. And so Satan is not selected. Right. He doesn't just select who he wants to hinder. Mm -hmm. He's trying to hinder every one of us today. Yes. Those that are not doing what God wants to, them to do and yeah. those of us who are trying to do what God right. wants us to do. He wants to hinder us all. He wants to trip us up. Yes. Yep. Because he wants to steal what God has given to us. If you've been born of the Spirit, God has given you his spirit. He's given mm -hmm. you his peace. He's given you his love. He's given you his joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. So he wants you to go around feeling weak and depressed and down and out. But God didn't call us to be that. He has given us of his spirit. Yes. And the Holy Spirit. This is the one that was with Jesus and God when they created the world. You see, he, he's the one that causes the actions to take place. And we have him living on the inside yes, of us. Amen. Do you recognize that, that when you receive Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin, you have a Holy Spirit, the yes. dynamo, if you will, that's amen. down on the inside of you. He, it's inherent power. It doesn't need to get power from someplace else. It's already in there. And he's there for you. <coughs> He came in, and the Bible says he was sealed there until Jesus returns. And so he doesn't come in and go out, come in and go out. No, he's always there, whether you recognize him being there or not. He's activated by our faith. We have to believe. We have to believe. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible. So if you're trying to believe, you're trying to please God, and you don't trust what God's saying, you're not trying to stand up on what God says. I know some people wonder why we sing the songs that we sing. We can sing some songs that would get you up, and I mean, you would be jumping and bobbing and going on, and, and your flesh would be going, you know, but it wouldn't be saying anything. Right. It sounds good. It feels good, but is it telling you anything? Well, amen. Mm -hmm. You see, we sang about Jesus this yes, morning. Yes. All the songs that we sang that were about Jesus, amen. he's awesome in this place. Yes, he is. And he's like holy water yes. upon our skin. Amen. We talked about Jesus this morning. Yes, we did. And so if you hang around enough, you'll get used to that and you'll enjoy that just like you enjoy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cutting that down. I, I like some of that too. But I want, I want to praise Jesus yes. 
church. Come on, give him a glory. Yes. 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 Because God gave it all. Yes, he did. Yes, did. It's just sometimes we just need to mix them up. Yes. Not have all the one this and all the one that. We need to combine them and have some of all of them because God made us all. We, yes, we are made in his image and after his likeness and we have desires that we have things that we like better than we like other things. But I tell you what, when we come into the house of the Lord yes. and we come in with a mind yes. to hear from the Lord, yes. to seek the Lord and all of his goodness and all of his fullness, it doesn't matter what the song is. Yes. It helps us to get into a right frame of mind. It helps yes. us to get in a right spirit, if you will. Yes. But if you come for Jesus, you didn't come for the singers. You didn't come for the preacher. You came for Jesus. Yes. And if you come with your heart prepared and your ears open, Jesus will minister to you right where you are. Whatever it is that is going on. And so we just need to come for the right reason. Amen. We come to seek and to serve the Lord. Yeah. We come Amen. to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Amen. And so that's what God wants us to do. Yeah. You know, most people don't recognize when, when the Satan is using them. Mm -hmm. I, that's a good truth. Yeah. They just think, well, you know, this is something I want to do. Right. I just feel like doing this. Mm -hmm. But if it's not producing what God would have it to produce, then you're allowing the, the enemy to use you. Yes. And because our desire to see Jesus, we should be drawing closer mm -hmm. to him. We should be grounded in his word mm -hmm. and in his love for us. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy doubles his effort yes, to try to sidetrack us, mm -hmm. to try to trip mm -hmm. us up, to try to get us away from the things of God. And anything you love strongly besides Jesus becomes bait for, the, for Satan. Mm -hmm. You love that more than you love Jesus, that's some bait that Satan can work with. Yeah. But when you put forth effort to see Jesus, to draw closer to him, you will not be denied if you keep on pressing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you say, well, I've been trying to, you know, get to Jesus. I've been trying to talk to Jesus, and mm -hmm. it just seems like I'm so far. Just keep on. Yes. He wants to know if you really, really want to feel it. Yes. Do you really, really want to feel it? Do you really, really want him to touch you again today? Yes. Well, just keep on seeking. Mm -hmm. Because he says, if you seek, you shall find. If you knock, the door shall be open unto you. And so we just need to keep on seeking. Yes. So we need to put forth some effort because God's desire to see us and to be with us is always greater than our desire to see him True. and to be with him. True. In verse 5, uh, Jesus said, he, you know, Jesus came to the place where he looked up mm -hmm. into the tree where uh, Zacchaeus was. It wasn't by accident that he looked up in that tree. <laughs> He knew Zacchaeus was up in that tree. Mm -hmm. Just like he knows where each of us are. Each moment of the day of our lives. He knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. He knows what we're saying. He knows what we shouldn't be doing and what we shouldn't be saying. He knows all of those things because he's omnipotent. That means he's all-knowing. He knows all things. And there's nothing that we can hide from him, even though we think we hide something from him. If you don't see another, you know, Christian or something, we just think we hid. Nobody saw me. Mm -hmm. But there's a great eye in the sky. Yes, it is. He looks. His eyes are going to and fro throughout the earth. Yes. Beholding the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. yes. They got some artificial eyes in the sky. <laughs> They're also beholding the good and the bad. That's true. So if you got some artificial eyes that's watching everything that you're doing, just Take that multiplied quadrillion of time and think about what God is saying. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's seen all things. And he knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. Yeah. And so he didn't just look up in that tree because the tree was there. I mean, if you're walking along with a crowd of people, why would you get to a certain spot and stop? And say, Zacchaeus, come down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, he already knew Zacchaeus didn't introduce himself. Yeah. He didn't say, my name is Zacchaeus and I'm waiting for you. Yeah. He just looked up and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. <laughs> and of course, he knows your man's child. Yeah. He knows your dress. Yeah. He knows everything there is to know about you. Yeah. 
He said, make haste and come down, for today I'm going to abide at your house. Mm -hmm. Now, the word abide means to, it wasn't a quick trip. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to sit down and take some time at your house today. Yes, mm -hmm. We're going to have communion. We're going to have fellowship today. When I say communion, I'm not talking about the communion table. We're just going to have some interaction between right. you and me today. Come down because I must abide in your house today. Zacchaeus didn't have any idea that his running ahead and going up in that tree would give him an audience with the king of glory. Amen. He wasn't called Amen. king of glory then. He was just, some of them just called him a prophet, so a good man. You know, they didn't recognize him as the savior. But Zacchaeus knew enough that he wanted to see this man yes. that he had heard about. Yes. And so, do you know enough about this man that you want to see him? Have yes. you heard enough about him that you want a closer walk with him yes. today? Yes. Zacchaeus was rewarded for his putting forth effort, for his doing out of the ordinary. I haven't heard of anybody else in the Bible that ran ahead and climbed the tree to get to see Jesus. Zacchaeus is the only one that the Bible names. So how bad do you want to see Jesus today? That's the question. How bad do you want to see him? Last Sunday I preached a message on um, what did I preach a message on? <laughs> I preached a message on this same Jesus. This same Jesus. Not a one. And do you know the Jesus that I'm talking about today is the Jesus that I talked about last week? He's the right. Jesus that's coming Amen. to receive us to himself. Yes. Not a no, this same Jesus. And so, can you see that this love that this man Zacchaeus had, it didn't end with just coming down and having a visit with him. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus goes on and he begins to tell him that I'm going to give up half of all that I have to the poor. I told you his name was was pure, clean, and what, what else did I tell you? Isn't it just? Pure, clean, and just. In other words, he's demonstrating what his name means. He's not trying to just have an audience with the Lord and then go back to, you know, stealing from the people. That wasn't what he was doing. He wanted to meet the Lord. And so he had that opportunity because Jesus was there to minister to him, just like he stopped by the well so he could minister to the woman that was at the well. Mm -hmm. He's there to minister to Zacchaeus. He's here to minister to each one of you Amen. in the house today. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you really want to see him today, you can see him today in the mind, in the eye of the spirit. You can see him today. He's right there with you. He's right there beside you. He's there to, to hear whatever your needs are. He's there to minister to whatever your needs are. You know, a songwriter wrote a song once entitled, Oh, I Want to See Jesus. Yeah. Yes. And I got the chorus here for you. It says, Oh, I want to see Jesus, to look upon his face, to see, there to sing forever of his saving grace. Mm -hmm. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. That's what we have to look forward to, church. Yes. We are going to see him face to face. If you've been born of the Spirit of Christ, you will see him face to face. Amen. Amen. And to look up on his face, on the streets of glory, every man is going to see him at the end. When the dead in Christ shall rise and every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord, everyone is going to see him, but they won't want to see him. They won't see him like those who are born in the Spirit will see him. They'll see him as judge, not as Savior. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see him as judge. Mm -hmm. He's given mm -hmm. us another opportunity Thank today. You. Whatever is not right here is right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody asked me this morning, how are you doing? I, I've had some, some illness. And how are you doing? I said, all is not well shall be. Amen. Because he is not healed. Yes, yes. And what hasn't been completed, he shall complete. Yes, Amen. And I have that confidence down yes. on the inside of my soul, all the way down to my toes. I have no yes. doubt about it. 
I know he's going to do what he's going to do because he said he would. He's not a man that he should lie. That's how we need to get to be with Jesus. How we need to get with the things of God that we just know that we know that we know. Well, it doesn't look like that. It may not look like that, but this is what God said, and so I'm not moving from that place. Because nobody has the power to change anything that I need but God. He is the one who has the power to change it. And he doesn't have to come and stand down here before me to do it. He can use you, and he can use you, and he can use somebody else to change something that I need for my life. Just like he can use me to change some things that you need for your life. And so what I'm saying to us is we are relational people. God has called us in relationship. And we are there, and sometimes it's not even somebody you know. It's somebody you may, first time you've seen them, and but God will speak to you to speak to them in, in a particular way. And God will use you for them. You never know. Only thing you just need to do is submit yourself unto the Lord. Submit yourself unto His will. Allow Him to be the one who directs your path each day. I know we think we're grown, but we're all children of God. Amen. Amen. Did you know God didn't have any grown folk? He has children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're all children of God. Yes. Amen. And he wants us to act like his children. And so this particular song spoke to me as I was going through this message because mother sang it every now and then. She'll break out and she'll sing that chorus. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for We're going to have to learn the full song because the full song mm-hmm. is beautiful. Yeah. In Revelations 3 and 20, and he quoted it this morning, uh, that Jesus, if you open the door of your heart, Jesus mm-hmm. will come in and sup with you. Mm-hmm. I looked up that word sup. It means to eat the evening meal of supper. This word shows that the busyness of the day is past and the evening is unheard. And there's time to relax, to fellowship Amen. with one another. Amen. Amen. That's what that word is. He wants to come in. He's not in a hurry to, to run in and <coughs> renovate, you know, on the inside of your heart and I'm going to the next person. He comes to remain. He comes to Amen. abide with us. Amen. Jesus greatly desires our fellowship. Yes. And that requires that we give him some of our time. Undivided time. Time when you're, you just take time to sit down and be still and listen to him. Yes. Or just praise him. Yes. Just thank him. Yes. Think back over your life and all of the stuff that God has brought yes. you through. Yes. Think back yes. over your life and and the times that you could have died, but you didn't yes. die. Yes. You know that God has been good to you. Yes, he has. You may not have everything that you want, but God has made sure that you had some food to eat. Yes. God has made sure that you had some clothes to put on. Yes. You had a roof over your head. Just sometimes just stop and think about the goodness of God. Yes. Because God is good. He is yes. good, church. Yes. He is good. trials and some troubles. Yes. He told us about that ahead of time. Yes, he did. So we wouldn't be surprised when yes, it happened. Yes, yes, he yes. says, in this world you're going to have trials yes, and you're yes, going to yes. have tribulations, yes. but be of good cheer yes. because yes. I've overcome the world. Yes. You see, we are in him. We are in Christ. Thank and Christ has overcome the world. <laughs> that means we All have right. overcome the world. Amen. We may have to go through some setbacks, some hard times, some pain here or there. But he says if we don't suffer with him, neither will we reign with him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So we go through those times. Yes. But the operative word there is through. Mm-hmm. You don't go there and just sit down and take a seat. Say, I think I'll just stay right here. Mm-hmm. No, you go through those times. Yes. Yes. And as we go through those times, yes. it teaches us. Yes, it does. It, it, we learn patience as we go through those times. Mm-hmm. We get experience as we go through those times. And when we come to the next something that's trying to knock us down, mm-hmm. we got something to stand fast. That's right. Yeah. I can yeah. stand back there and on this because I know. That's right. I don't have to tell you what the preacher told me. I don't have to tell you what my mama told you. I can tell you what I know. That's what right. Said. Because God yeah. has brought yes. me through this. And God has yeah. taken me through that. And so there's some things that we need to know for ourselves. Yes. So Zacchaeus here. Mm-hmm. 
He chose the best thing, and that is to spend time with Jesus. Not everyone wants to receive Jesus. There are plenty. I'm satisfied. I don't know. I had someone tell me recently, well, you know, I'm just trying to get myself together, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I said, well, that doesn't have anything to do with knowing Jesus. Well, you know, I know my grandmama told me, you know, I've been knowing him for a long time because I was brought up, and, you know, and I said, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Knowing Jesus. Well, I'm getting ready. Next couple of weeks, I'm going to be going back to the military. And he told me all of the benefits and stuff you can get when you're in the military. I said, That's great. And I thank you for the service to your country. But they have nothing right. to do with knowing right. Jesus. Right. Right. In other words, I didn't let him wiggle out. Right. Because they try to wiggle out and give you all the reasons why. Right. Right. I don't need Jesus because I got all of this going for me. Right. But he was at the door asking for money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Church, we need the Lord. Yes. yes. We need the Lord. Yes. Every person will stand and give an account Amen. for the deeds done in the body. Be they good or bad. God sees them all. Zacchaeus didn't just entertain Jesus by himself, but he invited all of his public and friends to come and meet Jesus as well because they were not welcomed. They were like the outcasts. They were the tax collectors of Rome. And so people didn't particularly care for them. Like we don't particularly care for the tax collectors today. <laughs> we don't particularly, especially if they come into our house, we don't really want them to come. <laughs> but he invited his friends. And what that's saying to me is, is that when you get to see Jesus, when you get to what you need, don't just say, oh, I got mine, and you get yours. No, we need to make sure we reach out to others, that they may have the same opportunity to have what we have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because God is not a respecter of person. He loved Jesus died for every single person yeah. that would receive yeah. him yeah. in the pardon of their sin. He didn't just die for the few. He died for all. Yes, yes. And he wants them all. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to be selfish in our quest and our relationship with Jesus Christ. We can reach out and try to gather as many, you know, alongside of us, with us as we can. We don't have to just pick and choose. Invite them all. The rich, the poor, you know, the in-between. Doesn't matter. They all we all need Jesus. Just yes, because you're rich don't mean you don't need Jesus. Many of them think they don't need Jesus because they have their wealth. They have their prestige, you know, they the people that they know, that they socialize with, the people on my level. Not my their level. But those people don't have a heaven or a hell to put you right. Jesus has both. Yeah, yeah. And so we need him. Part of our responsibility is to help the lost win the lost to Christ. So many of Zacchaeus' fellow publicans were gathered there with him. And this is where Zacchaeus stood and he made this declaration. The half of all that I have, I give to the poor. You see, God has to have touched your heart. If you're a rich man, you're rich. And you say, I'm going to take half of my riches and I'm going to give them to the poor. That's not an ordinary man. No, it's not. Those of us who love the Lord, who don't have a whole bunch, wouldn't want to give half of what we have because we figure we need it. Mm -hmm. But he gave half of what he had to the poor. He said, if I've taken anything else by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. You know, the four times as much as what I have taken. Mm -hmm. He was true to the meaning of his name. At verse 9, he, Jesus said unto him, this day, not another day, right. not when you stop being a publican, not when you come and do something special for me, but this day, salvation is come to your house, for as much as you are a son of Abraham. Salvation is promised, as well as a spiritual relationship. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him we might be saved. 
Amen. Jesus' mission was to seek and to save the lost. Yes. That mission has not changed, church. Amen. It's still the same mission. Yes. The only difference is he has transferred that mission to you and I. Yes. It's up to us to seek and to save the lost. Yes. You say, well, you can't save anybody. When I bring them to Jesus and they get saved, God used me to save them. Yes. That's right. So it's up to each one of us. It's just been transferred to you and me. And we are to be proactive about that. That means that we don't wait for the opportunity to come to us, but we seek opportunities to talk to somebody about Jesus. Amen. And then expect a harvest. Expect that you're going to receive a harvest. When you do what God says to do, expect God to do what he says he will do. He has promised us that if we would do what he says do, delight yourself in the Lord, he says, I give you the desires of your heart. So you got some desires in your heart? Mm -hmm. Start desire, delighting yourself in the Lord. And you can have those things. <coughs> I have a house that I'm living in today that God gave us that my husband said we couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. But I think it was less than six months after I told him I wanted a house, we had the house. So I didn't say anything else to him about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told him I wanted this house. He said, no, we can't afford the house. I didn't talk to him anymore. I talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? I'm still living there. I've been living there for 30-some years. <laughs> God will give you the desires of your heart when you delight yourself in him. Those who have received Seed can expect to gain a return. In verse 10, which was the last verse of our text today, it ends with the seeking Savior who came into the world to save sinners. To that end, Jesus spoke things using parables. He commissioned the twelve, you and me, that we might continue the work that he left once he was gone. He's expecting a harvest when he comes to church. He's expecting the talents and the gifts that he has given to us to have a reap of return. Are you using the gifts that God has given you for him? Because you can use them for yourself too. A lot of people are. But use them for him. Don't bury them. Those who have received the seed will receive a return. Zacchaeus gained an audience with Jesus. But he also brought his friends to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Each of us will one day stand before him. Yes. It's up to us whether he says, well done, mm -hmm. or get thee behind mm -hmm. me, I knew you not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's up to us. Yeah. He's not going to force himself on any of us. Mm -hmm. But he gives us every opportunity. Mm -hmm. If we believe Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose for our justification, yes. all we need to do is invite him in. Yes. And he will come in. You don't have to ask him twice. Yes. He'll come in. Amen. Once we're saved, we are instructed to learn of him. And then to do as he instructs us to do. And to that end, we seek to serve him by laying aside all those sins and the weights that have beset us mm -hmm. yes. in this life. And there's so many things that beset us in this life. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this young lady over there, and I'm looking at you because of your age. I don't know your age, but I know you're young. Mm -hmm. And I know that living in this world today, mm -hmm. there's Holly sitting there. Yeah. Living in this world today is a heavy, it's, yes. it's a really heavy mm -hmm. duty job. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, that Jesus loves you. Yes. He has the best plan that you can have in your life. And it would do you well to turn a deaf ear to some of the things the world is trying to pull you into and press in the more to the things of the Lord. Amen. Because he has so much more for you. Amen. More than you could ever dream he has for you. More than things you could think about, oh, I'd like to do this and I'd like yes. to do that. God can do so much yes. more than that for you. Yes. You see, we have these finite minds. His is infinite. It's far above all yes. that we can think, all that we can ask. But you need to seek Him if you want to receive it. Yes. 
That's why I can't stress enough today, church, that Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Yes. He's coming soon, and what we do, we must be quick with. Because the night is coming and no man can work. And so we must work while it is day. I don't know if there's anyone online today or anyone here in the house today who don't know Jesus. But if you don't know Jesus, I invite you to receive him today. Does everyone in here, has everyone in here received the Lord? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you have and you want to, then I'm going to ask that you raise your hand. I just want to pray with you, that's all. I'm not trying to beat you up. <laughs> because he wants you just that much. Amen. He'll wait for you. That's just the one back there, Sister Sue. And she doesn't walk very well. So I'm going to ask, brother, I'm going to ask Sister Kelly, if you go back there and lay your hands on Sister Sue, you want to be very happy. That's the best decision that you can make is to invite Jesus Christ into your heart. Yes. You know, that's the one decision that will follow you throughout your life. And it will make sure that you do get to see Jesus, yes. not as your judge, but as your Savior. Yes. He wants to see you as your Savior, yes. not as your judge. Yes, yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we just bless you and praise you for your word today. Lord, we want to see you. We want to hear you say, well done. Yes. But we have to have done well in order to hear you say, well done. Yes. So help us to do well, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this soul, Lord God, yes. that acknowledges that she needs you. Yes. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your love for her. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would reveal yourself to her in supernatural ways because you are a supernatural God. And Father, we know that there is nothing in her life that you can't handle. And so, Father, as you see her today and as you receive her today, Father, I ask that you would do a new thing in her. Transform her, Father, to the image of your very son, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And should there be any online today who are uh, saying this prayer, Father God, I pray for them right where they are. Yes. Lord God, I pray not only that you would come into their hearts and save their souls, but I pray, Father God, that you would direct them to the church that you would have them yes. to be in. Yes. In the name of Jesus. One where Christ is the center. Yes. That's where we want them to go, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory for it all. Yes. But it's in your son Jesus' name. We give you glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for these your people today, Lord. Yes. And I give you praise. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.